Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to create a game object which is going to represent my game. So I, I want to have some kind of object that actually deals with drawing the game and updating the game as a whole. And at the moment I've got this game view class here and I've got a game runner which deals with the kind of multi-threading aspect a kind of game loop. It deals with running stuff at the right time. But I think I'd like to also create a game object which this runner runs. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So I'll right click the package here. And this, uh, this structure is kind of slightly arbitrary and not necessarily the absolute 100% best way to do this. But it seems like a way that's reasonably simple and reasonably quick and um, not too badly structured. So I'll call this game and I want this, I want my game to have several kind of uh, phases to it. So it's going to have, we're going to of course need to have a constructor and to the constructor I'm going to have to supply some things, uh, in particular prob probably the surface holder because the game, the game is going to have to lock that to get a canvas. And uh, so let's have a surface holder here. And I, I'm going to also pass it probably a resources object because it's going to have to load, somewhere anyway, we're going to have to load the actual bitmaps and sounds that we're going to use in this simple game. And I suppose the game is a reasonable place to do it. Although I'm not completely decided in my own mind, but let's pick a course and stick to it. So let's have a private surface holder holder and a private resources resource. Actually it probably would have been quicker to define these variables first and then get Eclipse to automatically generate the constructor. But this will also do Is my I don't know how to get rid of this error in Eclipse which came up since the last time I updated it but I'm hoping a future update is going to fix it. Let's say this dot um, resource equals resource that probably should be resources actually um, this is the resources object I can get things like the, the bitmap and the sound from the sounds from and now um, I'm going to give this a method called init and this is this is going to be something that gets called uh, to actually do the loading of stuff so let's say public void init so that the idea is that's going to be called um, once per game and in this tutorial I'm not going to implement as I said before I'm not going to implement saving and loading of the game state and you could do that if you wanted using shared preferences or um, even a SQLite database or any number of other techniques but I'm not going to implement that here because that's uh, that's not specific to animation and I'm going to have a public void update and I'm going to pass the time elapsed to the update method that's the time elapsed since update was last called which I'm going to figure out in my game runner and we need that in order to be figure in order to figure out how far to move our game along. If we're going to animate a ball, which I'm going to, then to know how long the ball should have moved since the last update, I need to know how long has passed since this method was last called. And uh, regardless of what you do, you can't be sure that anything's going to happen on the dot at an exact regular interval in Java. So I'll, I'll figure that out and pass it in. And then let's also have a public void draw. And that probably doesn't need to take anything because that's going to that's gonna get the canvas from the holder here and draw stuff on it. And then just to wire this in to be going on with, although I'm going to do um, more work on this bit by bit. In, um, in my game view, I'm, I'm creating this game runner that handles the multi-threading. But I'm also going to create a game. So let's say private 
game game and when the surface is created I can then say game equals new game and I can pass that to my game runner to actually run it and uh, that's probably all I need to do for the moment I think maybe I'll have a, um, a kind of sh shut down method for the game or maybe not I'm not really sure yet so I'm going to go to the game runner constructor and I'm going to make it accept a game so I haven't got a constructor yet so let's let's define private game game here and uh, the reason that I'm, I'm actually doing new game in my game view class is kind of just in case I want to interact directly with the game in the game view and in particular what I'm thinking of is that I might want to pass the touch events directly to the game rather than have to pass them through the game runner so um, that's why I'm defining it here even though it's actually the game runner that's actually going to call the draw and update methods so I'm going to pass game uh, to my game runner in a constructor and let's just right click here and go to uh, source and generate constructor using fields and just tick game there we go and I'll get rid of super because I, I don't need that and now I in my um, run thread here I can call the game methods I'm going to get rid of this debug because I've I've used that and I know that it works now um, it's uh, actually running at my on my phone at the moment and it's saying thread running every like three times a second or something and in here I'm going to say game dot update and that's where we're going to update the logic of the game and update the positions of things and I'm going to say game dot draw and that's going to just draw whatever should be on the screen at the time now to figure out this uh, kind of time elapsed since update was first called I'll probably I'll get rid of this sleep I might put it in later if I want to do some more debugging but I'll get rid of it for now and I'm going to say I'm going to give this um, actually probably in run I'm going to have a long uh, let's call this last time or something like that and I'm going to set last time equal to system dot current time milliseconds so last time is going to be set equal to the current time and in the game loop whenever I go around the loop I'm going to say long now equals system dot current time milliseconds and long elapsed now is going to be equal to the difference between now and last time and after I've called the draw and update methods I set last time equal to now so if you've been programming for quite a while you'll recognize that kind of pattern and if you haven't well the idea is that we we get the current time and then we subtract from it whatever the last time we recorded was we use that and then we set the last time recorded to whatever we just got for now so that the interval here elapsed is always going to be the difference between the two it's going to be um, basically the amount of time that's um, elapsed since the last time we called this update method which is what we need and one other thing I'm going to do here is um, you have to think about like let's say we're, we're updating the position of a ball on the screen and this is kind of this is not Android specific it's just kind of general game programming then what if something's happened to the device we're running this on and for some reason it hasn't called this for like a neon um, then uh, we might end up with elapse being very very big for some crazy reason or maybe the, the game's been paused and resumed although we're not actually allowing this game to be paused and resumed in this case if it's paused I'm just gonna recreate everything from scratch when it's resumed again with a new thread and a new game but um, that that could be something you want to implement pause and resume and resume 
and so you have to think about what if elapsed is a really huge number and if you're calculating the position of a moving object based on elapsed if you're not careful you'll end up calculating that the object should be like two kilometers off the side of the screen or something so what I'll say is if elapsed is less than a hundred let's say or maybe even maybe even less than that um, well we'll try a hundred a hundred milliseconds then we'll do the update and the draw and if it's if it's going to be more than a hundred that's more than a tenth of a second you can't have a playable game um, if it's a kind of motion based game when the frames only updating 10 times a second so if it, if the elapsed is more than a tenth of a second then you might as well just not draw an update at all and just wait until you reach a point where um, there's enough processing power to actually do the update in less than a tenth of a second so um, not being a game programmer I'm not really sure how this is most frequently handled but this seems like a reasonable way to me so um, so let's try this and um, we do need to do something there to avoid having um, avoid trying to draw things off the edge of the screen due to a very long time having elapsed between the last update and uh, that's probably all I'm going to do for this tutorial let's just take a look at there's an error here and that's because I've got to put in the right stuff to this constructor which is going to be the holder uh, I'm going to use this holder that's passed into surface created and I'm, I'm going to say get resources to get resources and the game will then be able to load the bitmaps and I think we'll probably look at that in the next tutorial so that's it for this time nothing to show this time but we've put the kind of basic plumbing in place now the basic structure of this game and we can go, go ahead and load stuff and draw stuff hopefully so that's it for this time and until next time happy coding <laughs>